Well, hello there, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Paul de Guzman Presents Art. So I'm very happy to have uh, found that I have some new subscribers to the channel. Thank you very much for your patronage. I mean, it's not going to cost you any money, but I'm really thankful that this channel is starting to go and reach some people, and I'm getting some really great feedback. So thank you for all of those who have supported the channel by subscribing or by contributing to the uh, engagement in contemporary art, not just here in Vancouver, but elsewhere. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the unceded and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations, also commonly known as the City of Vancouver. So in the City of Vancouver, I am in the 800 block of East Broadway. Specifically, it's 866 East Broadway, and we're visiting Pale Fire Projects, which is a really wonderful independent space curated and run by Amy Kazimerchuk. And today, we're going to go in and have a look at some works, specifically an installation of ceramic works by Nicole Andre. So I'm just going to go inside. We'll have a look and we'll see and hope you enjoy it. So a little bit information about Kale Fire Projects. It is open Fridays and Saturdays from 12 noon to 10 p.m. And um, all of the information about the, um, the project space or the gallery will be contained in the description area of this video. So we're just going to go in and have a look. Open the door. So we're just going to go and pan through the entire gallery. I'm not going to say anything about the works yet because I want it to remain a little bit enigmatic for now. But suffice it to say that the, um, there's a couple of articles written. Uh, one is on the website and the one is uh, in a brochure that's available in the gallery. I'll show you the brochure. So that's the brochure that's in gallery. The brochure is written by, or I, I guess you can call it a takeaway or a, or a little tearaway. Um, it was written by an artist who used to be based here in Vancouver. His name is Eli Bronowski, and he's an excellent writer. And on the website is also a, a short article written by Amy Kazimerchik, who is also the... Um, the, the, the proprietor and the curator for this space. I'm just going to go and have a look at, this is more like a panning of the works. So I'm not sure if it's uh, apparent around this moment in time, but these are all ceramic works. And on the floor is an installation with the knotted ceramic works and some paving stones, which I think they actually got from the nearby Home Depot. I should know, I used to uh, work part-time at the Home Depot and I know these quite intimately. <laughs> Anyways. So what do I know about Nicole Andre? I know that the first time I saw her work was about more than a decade ago when she had her first show at the CSA space. Um, and I think that was also when she completed her BFA here in Vancouver. And then I kind of lost track of the trajectory of her work because she had gone out of town to complete her master's elsewhere. And Interestingly enough, let's say a decade has gone by and I encountered her work again last year at a local Vancouver space called CSA Space. And the one thing that I really want to comment on her work, even from the past and into the present, is the sense of fluidity about the work that she's trying to do. She's also kind of like looking at, let's say, 
architectural practice or even certain rigid concepts that seems in her practice to gain a certain sense of looseness or fluidity. And the same thing goes for these ceramic objects that you have lying on the floor or even on the walls. The first thing that you probably notice about these works is that they look like inner tubes. They almost look like deflated inner tubes. And I'm very familiar with those things because I'm a cyclist and I tend to cycle everywhere. So somewhere written in one of the two articles, I think there was a mention of using flattened or semi-inflated inner tubes to actually experiment with knots. Now we're probably all very familiar with knots as it is used in, let's say, seafaring or fishing industry, you know, when you're knotting something, like you're knotting or repairing a net. But at the same time, there's also a very scientific um, and mathematical school that studies knots in its infinite complexity. And the article that Eli Bernowski, the writer, had uh, written about in his most excellent and entertaining uh, brochure has to do with the fluidity of mathematics and sciences. And it's something that I tend to sort of like relate with because I'm very interested in sort of like the softening, let's say, of, of spaces like architectural spaces. How does something that is sort of considered rigid, how can we actually soften something that is that has this sort of like sense of um, rigidity about it. And um, I think the works in this show tend to sort of like look at that aspect of the softening of a certain rigid discipline. When you look at, let's say, mathematics, mathematics is almost surely considered a very exacting science. But at the same time, mathematics is also used in sort of like formulating, let's say, knot theory or the fluidity of space, there's a lot of applications that an, that an exacting science like mathematics tends to sort of like prove the fluidity of certain phenomenon in nature. But you know what? Enough of that. You're probably getting bored with that one. So I'm going to go and have a look at these ceramic works because these works tend to sort of defy a certain sense of logic. <laughs> That's the only thing that I can think about when I'm describing these because when you're looking at the titles for these works, they are titled in numbers. Pretty much um, a certain naming convention that's used in prime knot theory about the number of knots that you create and the possibilities of how many intersections there are. I don't, really, I don't exactly know the entire theory behind it. But I guess when you're looking at works like this, a lot of those ideas tend to sort of like become more like an underlay towards the object, object themselves. When you look at the object, you kind of like question, why are these forms like this? You know, what can I deduce from these forms that I have not been able to do just by looking at them? And there's a really sumptuous quality to them. A lot of them are quite glossy, some of them are actually bisque fired because they are ceramic works after all. And when you're looking at it, ceramic works are sort of like in essence almost a testament to that sort of sense of fluidity because ceramic works are based in clay. And clay is one of those malleable substances that when you expose it to a higher temperature, it becomes solid. So there's that sort of like interplay of states of being which I find really, really interesting with regard to this work.
I'm over good at the over here, so I'd like to sort of look at some of these works more in close proximity because some of them really need to be looked at up close. We're going to go to the other wall there too because there's this certain set of complexities and I think these works may have superseded the what I would term as the inner two works because these are first and foremost definitions of knots and they're quite rigid and then when you look at some of the works that are hanging these obviously do not defy gravity they tend to sort of follow gravity very much like when you're hanging an inner tube on a wall it tends to sort of like deflate in a certain way so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave it at that because there's a lot of things to be discussed with this work there's this essence of mathematics and the sciences that define it, not theory, for example, and also the sense of fluidity that can be achieved with something that is seemingly rigid, like, for example, a rigid science or something. But rest assured, what I'm going to do is I will put on the necessary gallery links, website links, times that the gallery is open, and also an excerpt to the, uh, the brochure text that Eli Bronowski has um, written for the show. So if you lasted this long, I hope you still like it, so click the thumbs up button. Also, if you're curious about future um, topics for this channel, just click the subscribe button. It's free, it's not going to cost you anything and it will give you some notification as to when the new video will be out. I usually put out a video every week, so hopefully you have gained something from this, from this video of the work of Nicole Andre over at Pale Fire Projects, 866 East Broadway Street, open Friday and Saturday from noon to 10 p.m. And on that note, I am out of here. Thank you. Have a great day.